we're going to return to, there are, just on that, air traffic control. So there have been uh, proposals from a consortium sort of proposal from uh, Green Mountain Power, Vermont Electric Co-op, and Efficiency Vermont Offense in New Language. I asked uh, Luke to draft it, but before we go on to that, I thought it would be helpful for us to, and I'm offering it sort of without uh, making a recommendation, just so that we could have it drafted and then we'd have uh, sort of formal correct language to look at. Uh, but we had that decision point document that we were going to last week, and we stopped. I thought it would be helpful to pick up where we left off before we start looking at even more language. So I don't know if everyone has this document. Um, it's either Thursday or Friday. Yeah, so I'm sorry, I apologize. I didn't take that out with the second one. Otherwise, I'm supposed to get the top of the pile. I think it's going to be easier for me Makes no, I think he, I know he had it last. So this one with that caption, yeah, is that? that yeah. yeah, gotcha. Yeah, that's I see right here, he's so he's here. all yeah, he's all set. set. Can't see. Cool. Um, it has this caption on it? No, it's the one that has oh, right. the italics underneath the block of text. Oh, the gray. Yeah, I usually yeah. take these things home and work on them. Oh, I think that's what happened because it's not in your folder. Yeah. Okay. And then I leave them um, at the house. Let's get started. And you can yeah. Just print yeah, I would just love a new copy. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Gray. We'll roll from that adjustment. That's correct, yep. I think that's one of those. Excuse me. Do you want to, can you get it off? Do uh, <laughs> you make other notes on it? He doesn't have many. He's just got so, yeah, that's fine. So, this will be yeah, right. okay. Thank you very much. Can you get by okay? Excuse me. Sorry, I got to pop up so I think we had uh, finished phase one, we on to phase two, and then... Uh, if, uh, maybe, Mr. Chair? Yes, please. Um, I think there's new language from some of the stakeholders that, okay. that reopens right. page one. I don't know how you want to deal with that, or go back, um, keep blazing forward, or... Let's plow on, and then... Okay. We'll methodically work through the layers. All right. They're starting to accumulate on 48 hours. And where are we at, please? I think, well, just maybe we can both start it just right at the top of page two. Did you want to refresh everyone's recollection? or? Well, I thought we were maybe as far as you know, starting to get to the list of factors or something like that. Uh, could, could you refresh my recollection then? I think the first one was, uh, you know, does the committee want the PUC to open or continue a proceeding concerning the creation of an oil fuels EEU? Was there a question, was there an answer as to that? Starting point question, or was there just discussion? Um, so then, well, so everyone's right through the second language, low down to one. So let's just jump down to the questions. What did you do for? Okay, so I do know now where I have mine. So you're looking at page two. Yes. Yes, this is where exactly where we left up. Question one. Question one. Yeah. Right. Yes. Thank you. So, uh, what, you know, it worked well last week. So yeah. Uh, well, I have a dialogue. Yeah. But if sure. you know, it's through the questions, then we'll start sure. 
So the first question was, and if you don't mind, Mr. Chair, can I just briefly go through all four because some of them relate, but then we can go back to one if that sure. is. So does the committee want the PUC to open this proceeding to consider the creation, potential creation of oil fuels efficiency utility? Uh, if no, you're done. If yes, should it be one, more than one? Should it be a new entity or existing entity? And there was testimony from some stakeholders that they would prefer it to be phrased in terms of the existing efficiency utilities. Um, what are the factors to consider? I've listed A, B, C, D, E here based on the sponsor of this proposed language, but do you want to change those? And then there were suggestions about do you incorporate tier three under the RES requirements? Um, and the final bullet point was just from a pre uh, submission from Burlington Electric. I don't know if it's still relevant or not. So. So, they open it for I think that's a very good question though, because my view is they would have to come back with the rec if they propose that an all fuels efficiency utility be established or the jurisdiction of current ones be expanded to include all fuels. I think they would have to come back to the legislature and ask for enabling legislation to achieve that. I don't think they could just do it on their own. Maybe other parties that disagree with that, concern. but uh, that's yeah. my interpretation. Tend to have yes. Result in something that is I don't think they more, could establish an all fuels like efficiency utility on their own. Them, huh? So sure, maybe we would Ask them to come back on the 15th, January 15th next year on what they should have in such a document um, for us to uh, tell one another to go ahead and do it. Okay. Well, we have them coming back to provide uh, an update and preliminary, fi uh, preliminary findings and recommendations. So I share your. So do they have to have a contract to do that? Right? Or should they just. Well, so we're calling it you know, a proceeding, a little less formal. I don't know whether I'm getting pulled over to get a docket or a speeding ticket. Okay, so, uh, but I think the, the main point, other than having the label applied to whatever kind of proceeding okay. it is, correct? So you, we, we both. I'm satisfied that we're, right. we'll come to the right conclusion on that. So I don't want to no one goes ahead to do anything yeah. without coming back to the legislature. Which is a critical thing you're pointing out, right? Mm -hmm. uh, design, design it and implement it. This is a uh, think about how you do it and come back to your conclusion. <coughs> All right. So, um, is our, I, I'm, my understanding is the committee is yes. Um, uh, opening. Section for one. Mm -hmm. We're going ahead. Either opening or, or expanding what an existing proceeding is designed to address. Julie you took yours to make, oh, there it is. So I should take yours to make copies. Well, does it, or are we, do you want to determine whether or not we're yeah, opening we're page one? Two. Thank you. So we're this we're was the main lead on question. Do you start the proceeding? I, I just, yeah. Okay, so I just wondering. The language here uh, that has this phrase, uh, the label, mm -hmm. in sub one, creation of an all fuel uh, efficiency utility or utilities, uh, we went presupposing at the outset a single entity to do it. I think the testimony we heard last week suggested to me that uh, there are many different parties, including the distribution utilities, that also have full and for instance, tier three. Mm -hmm. And that if we're looking at uh, revising what energy efficiency utility can do, we might want to be open to what a distribution utility can do as well, so that the evolution of both parties really uh, is open, so that we don't have one one forward and the other one sort of they're, they're locked into their current position, not able to make a complementary adjustment. Okay. Um, the other thing I heard was that the notion of a all fuels, uh, Energy utility it was a phrase of concern to people. So, uh, for the time being, 
you know, I think what we're really talking about is a program that allows everyone to do more. Mm -hmm. Whether we label someone, I mean, uh, maybe removing the label of being the all fuels energy efficiency utility, we relieve some of the anxiety that we're picking somebody and we're not inviting someone else to do their own. So if we went to the term program for this time being, is that helpful? I'm comfortable with that. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So my understanding is, yes, you want the PUC to open a proceeding, but you want that proceeding to focus on the existing efficiency utilities and expanding their programs or mandate? Uh, my, I, would, I would say uh, that the PUC should open a proceeding to focus on the existing efficiency utilities and expanding their programs or mandate. Limiting it just to existing, uh, it may well be that only existing entities end up being part of the, some program down the road. Mm -hmm. But I would hate to think that uh, we heard from from Riley Allen and the department and from uh, Mr. Weston from RAP. There are different people emerging to deliver. New businesses are getting started to offer these services. So I would hate to think that someone said, oh, well, you can't be considered in the mix, this evolving mix, because you're not the appropriate, you're not, uh, you're not one of the, one of the stakeholders that they have to initiate the proceeding. So, personally, I would believe you're open. If some other useful service comes up that the PUC can consider it. I don't know who that would be. I just don't want to have anyone excluded. Mm -hmm. I mean, the other thing is we've been talking about uh, there's a certain healthiness to <coughs> uh, what well, early the most cost effective solution. Sometimes we figure that out by having people make different proposals about how to do uh, different types of work that are complementary. So I agree. Uh, preserve an evenness and open. So I, I think we want to have them come back to us um, on how we how one might design a, 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 a docket to do the things that are listed in. And have that back question in the early. Yeah. Okay, so it's a matter of you board smithed it so it's not a yet. Yeah. They're not opening a document they're going to recommend to us. And the next thing is between now and 24 months from now, what are we going to direct um, to take place? Okay. Well, and so I think then, they, then we get into the bottom of that first paragraph, sub one, the commission shall consider all information and factors that deemed appropriate, including whether or not. That wasn't before my attention was. While they're doing that, I mean, after the going through its procedures. Well, it's going through its procedures for the long haul. Right. And um, we're going to put our toe in the water and right. start doing something in the next 24 months. So when we get back to <coughs> final recommendations, that we already have a uh, work product that is either going well or needs to be modified or or easy to watch. Um, take a look at. I think we would be. I would jump right to well, the uh, section of the last page and tell it and decide what it is we'd like to have happen in the interim. And that will help us, the PUC, establish uh, what the PUC is to be doing during the next few years while we embark on a course. So, section one. In terms of getting started, not sitting on our hands for two years, section one provides more latitude for efficiency for more to use the carry forward money. Okay, what's the latitude there? Uh, X number of dollars to do all of the tasks. Um, I don't know if we get that specific, do we? I mean, well, basically, so there are set that policy. Subsequent, there are other proposals coming along that that list dollar values, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think what I'd like to do is use the answers we developed um, when we went to pay for them on Friday and 
and then keep making our way through this before we start going back and re editing the form. I didn't finish section two yet. I know this is overly methodical, but um, that's what I want us to We've collected a lot of questions, and maybe it would be helpful for us to answer our own questions before we edit yet again. I'm not dismissing a question. I just want to keep track of all these loose ends. So, for instance, sub three on page two it said, um, if we're going in and doing this docket, do we or what are we proceeding? Uh, the factors the PUC should consider, do we, amongst those factors, should we be more explicit about carbon reductions? I would say yes. And just to be clear, these call references do discuss the goals of the state to reduce greenhouse gas. Right. You can certainly be more explicit about carbon. I'm not trying to persuade you not to. But some of these call references touch on that. Right. So, can you say 578 is our greenhouse gas emissions? Yep. So since we've listed it, I'm feeling like I think that's it may enough. not be as apparent as someone just reading it, we didn't know, but 578 is our next gas targets. So are we satisfied by referencing what we already have? This is fine. A very quiet yes. Okay. <coughs> so uh so no additional language, just referencing yeah, that was yeah, what we already said. Uh so four. Tier three and expanding role, uh, expanding the role in tier three. So um, that's the three ESA 8005 uh, language. And sub three in there is tier three. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair, where are you now? You're well, we all page two number four. Thing yeah. Okay. There's no language. It's okay. Language, so we can add that in. But I think it's something that will make sense to me. Goes back to what I was saying before. Some of the uh, many DU says you're not, you didn't listen. You're not even saying what I we meant to say, uh, which is we're going to be looking at energy efficiency utilities, and they have an interaction with people providing services under Tier Three. Then uh, might we look at this Tier Three explicitly here, so that the PUC can say, oh, we need. Here we see all these working parts. Let's make sure all the gears get to work together better, not just work on the efficiency Vermont gears and leave the distribution utilities out of it because the role of all the players is a lot and we've got to figure out how to have it involved together. So next January they should come back with a recommendation on how gear three should take shape and, and be and then we can take a look and say, yeah, that makes sense, or what is that, it's crazy? Yeah. Anything in between. Okay. So I'm marking for the next draft that we will cross reference that for the DSA 2005. And also include the distribution utilities? Yeah, so those are, I mean, I think yep. they're only to be used the question to the room. Is any does anyone other than the D, only the distribution utilities have an obligation to implement tier three? Um, the other thing that came up was exempting BEP and Vermont gas that are already uh, operating uh, the main. I don't know if that's relevant now that you've right. made the other changes. Or I don't know if it needs to be stated in the statute now that we're making the other changes. Consider the recommendations and the actions that take place next year. Okay. So then I'm going to page three. And so just to refresh the recollection of the committee, one is all fuels, two is expanding the concept and definition of efficiency regardless of whether the PUC recommends establishing an all fuels utility or not. So one and two, and for that matter, three, which is funding, are sort of separate things. And so this is distinct from what you just talked about. So it could be hand in hand with the new all fuels, or it could be 
not, and just the existing efficiency utilities and their conception of efficiency services. And again, on the language that came over from GMP, BEC, and CPT, uh, they were suggesting to link some of these things to the list of uh -huh. uh, preceding paragraphs. So some or all of them, or? Uh, some, not all. So, um, most, but not all of them, you're correct. Um, so I thought, let's go through the list as we have it and see where we are, and then we'll look at how that other language includes. One thing that I, I have marked for testimony was that uh, sub G, flexible load management, introduced electric peak. Mm -hmm. When Mr. Weston was in, he suggested removing um, peak. That you would want to include load management across the board, including especially mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. so, well, I think he also was beyond just electricity, so it might be just have flexible load management semicolon. Right. I thank you. I marked your, so, how would it? Uh, yeah. How would that work now? So it's. Use it. Demand response, flexible load management, energy storage reduction. Okay, get rid so, of all. Okay. Yes, that was my understanding of his yeah. recommendation. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so, and then in terms of the questions you pulled out of different sources. to what's up there. So it would read. Correct. I could, if you want to add it, I could fit it in. But yes, it's a, to okay. specify renewable or to list biomass, biodiesel, renewable natural gas. <clears throat> you want to work that in in some manner. Well, it seems to me to keep it more broad, renewable energy, right? We're looking for greater specificity. Right. Um, and I was just adding it to D as in delta if you do. It seems to fit in pretty easily. So these renewable energy is broad enough that it yeah. captures everyone without and then, yeah. worrying about losing somebody out. All right. And then that takes well, I'm missing something, it's page four. Uh, before we on, move on, Mr. Chair, yeah. do you want to discuss whether two is kept separate from one or they're merged together? Or do you I think that the stuff on page four, there were many comments about, like very quickly. But there were suggestions that two and one sort of be combined. Um, so how about if we revise the version now? Okay. And um, then we'll lay that up all sure. the sides of the most current draft come out of the GMP at all and on page four, on um, um, funding. Um, we had a discussion briefly about the potential uh, to use, um, not really sure if this may be the, a suitable home for it or not. I'm not right. One of the ways we brought money to the table to do more renewable energy work was to identify directs and uh, we talked for a little while last week about could you, is it possible to say there's a thermal equivalent to them? And that is, if in one case you're certifying that energy was reduced, was produced renewably, on the other hand, if you could certify that you weatherize something and reduce demand permanently, wouldn't we, aren't both of those uh, valuable things? Are you know, gas bowls. Uh, there is no such thing as a, in Vermont as a thermal wreck. I know they've been explored in Maine, and uh, there's a way of bringing, since it helped us once to build renewables, I thought maybe it might help us again. 
bring money to the <coughs> thermal load reduction equation. Whether or not there is, it's a worthwhile, whether or not we find such a market, I don't know. But uh, under funding, I thought it might be worth putting on the table. Yeah, it's <coughs> worth Sounds good to me. Yeah. Um, the previous page. Yes. Where we do expansion of the programs and services of fishing. Um, I wish you incorporate additional technologies, comma, organizational strategies, comma, and funding realignments. And have our list. Um, and the reason I say that is suggest that, Mr. Chair, is that I think we having sent them out to do the long-range stuff, yeah. we should make a step forward with a temporary funding realignment that's going to take place now. Um, may not be as close and expensive as what we might end up doing recommending with the recommendation of the PUC next year. Yeah. But we ought to uh, take a step and allocate a certain amount of money and get a redirection while we are seeking the, the, the details on how to go farther in that direction. Okay. And does section one have some way to do? Does section one not do that from the perspective? Uh, it's the language around that <coughs> I was going to go into step two on the second page there. Right. Standing that and then going to the next one. So this is a difficult thing to do with a, with a group here. But I think we can come up with some specific language and okay. modify the good work. The, uh, All right. So we'll get a clean next draft from the instrument. Uh, Great. Right. So I said the council has done that. Right. Okay. Organization. Okay. Yeah. Great. And if you could uh, sit down with uh, him and just show the language you have, that would be helpful. Sure. And we'll have um, we'll have it in the hands of our council, and then we could look for the best place to use it once we spell it out. Okay. Thank you. All right. So I think. The only other comment I heard, there were two comments I had from last week about this, so let me not ignore the questions you have. How to best provide consistent adequate funding. Um, Mr. Wesson has said something along the lines of the process to look at any and all approaches to funding. <coughs> and that was, I think, because he was, it's not quite explicit, but he said, you don't want the PUC feeling constrained and thinking that you can only look at regulated tools. Uh, Mr. Faber's here, so I don't know if the language that we have in the bill, how to best provide a consistent adequate funding would be have to be interpreted as constrained that only look at regulated fuels or not. I, I wouldn't interpret that way. You would not. Okay. Would be given the authority to change how uh, we deal regulated fuels. So that can certainly give us the recommendations on how we might make those changes. Okay. So then uh, we don't need to be more there. In sub B, uh, schedule workshops and secret filings, blah, blah, blah. Uh, important comment I had was, as you see from Mr. Weston, was employ such processes as the PUC deems appropriate. I think we thought this was overly prescriptive. Um, does the language we already have in here seem in some way overly prescriptive? I think we can work with it. All right. We don't want to be tying to your hands in any way. Uh, I think all we were looking for was to make sure that it was an easy process for stakeholders to engage in, and any and all stakeholders would be welcome in the process. Mm -hmm. okay. um, then we get to sub C reports. Um, we uh, specified an interim report next January and a final report with recommendations in uh, 21, January 21. Uh, we had testimony last week that said 
can you push it along and have a final report in uh, uh, you know, 20, 2020? Um, so, uh, I, don't, I don't, I mean, my thinking on it is when uh, UC asks for more time in order to be done receiving what they feel is the, the amount of time they need to do it well, I'm loath to just tell them that hurry up. It doesn't seem like a recipe for success. So do it in half the time. These are the dates that they've agreed to, or they believe they can do the work with them. Yes. Um, but, you know, as maybe sort of a compromise, we might say, is do we want to ask for anything that is crucial as of next January as part of the interim report? that could be helpful to, to all parties. Well, what would you, what do you think would be most helpful if we were to receive something early? Any thoughts? Honestly, it's such a wide open proceeding that yeah. I don't know if what they're going to be in a position to make a much in the way of a recommendation yeah. other than, uh, I haven't seen an interim report come out and then legislative based on that before. Mm -hmm. That's one of the problems with our history with the PUC. We ask them what suggest what we ought to do, and they say it's our job is to suggest. They tell us what to do, and we'll do it. And then we tell them what to do, and they do it. We go, how did that happen? So that's that's it. this is happened on a few occasions. So I would encourage them to build their expertise and creativity and give us something by January fifteenth next year. And if they come in and say, no, we did our best, but we're busy. And and we're going to have to stumble through on our own, or if they come in with, with something that uh, helps us to clarify and give us a focus, then we may have adapted. So you want both on January 15th, 2020. That's what you're... Well, yeah. And we, yeah, we have... They're their own bosses, and they can participate in this and help us do the best job possible, and we can send them follow their recommendations or some of them or or um, they could be busy doing other things and say sorry we couldn't help that's the I think Mr. Avery is giving us a little guidance on what might be uh, possible. Right. Well on that suspenseful question yeah. we're gonna pause and uh, we'll make that to and then we have to call this at um, so I would invite anyone who has further thoughts on whether we're going to ask for hurry up in order to get an answer 2020 or the full time for proceeding uh, to think about it, talk to yourselves, and I'll be happy to talk with people. I'm uh, very reluctant when agencies and departments tell us they can't do something by the date they can tell them to do it anyway. Because for the most part, I think everyone's busy even when we're not asking them to do anything more. But, so something to consider. Something to thank consider. You. So thank you, everybody. Thank you. We will uh, tomorrow go to uh, the language that we have from EMP, EBC, EBC at all, plus we'll have our own version. And we'll start to see how these things are lining up or not lining up. Keep doing incremental edits. Yes, my hope is by Thursday we say, okay, we got all the language we need. And then that's when the money committee start writing checks to do the work. Because this is all money at the moment, or you can be moderate income weatherization. Um, we haven't addressed how we're going to pick up the pace of the load. So with that, thank you very much. We are adjourned. <laughs>